Edmund McMillan. You little fucker. You made a shit of peace with your trash, Isaac. It's fucking bad, this trash game. I will become back my money. I hope you will in your next time a cow on a trash farm, you sucker. You little fucking kid, you piece of shit. Did you now what you've done? I made a kill. A real kill. That in the farm of such a wolf? Only a work of one day. But that cow? It had meat on it. It is so good to eat, I will kill with my own hands, and not one wolf will try it. Not even one. You little fucker. You little... Dog. You cow. You piece of shit. I wish that in your next time you will die like you live now. Did you understand? The start of the story. A man named Isaac Slash Solo is seen standing by a tree with a single axe. The camera closes in on his face. Then in a few seconds, the axe hand bends. The man turns around with a huge axe in his hand. He is looking at a gray wolf. The camera then pans up to his face. The image is completely gray and glowing. He is grinning, making a come at me expression. His mouth is opened in a scream. His face is completely gray. The wolf has been left alone. However, as soon as the wolf is about to devour Isaac, Isaac's head starts turning, and he gets an ear-piercing look of dread. As his eyes flies open, he gasps, then drops to the ground, gasping. The camera is then shown sitting upright as the white wolf starts to show up. It looks angry, growling. The scene changes again, this time to an unusual scene that looks like a crystal cave. It's dimly lit and has a vaguely lunar feel to it. Suddenly, a crystal dragon flies through the cave. He then transforms into a man and then morphs back. This is where things start to get a bit confusing. Both of these characters were here previously and we never really saw either of them again. Maybe they are meant to be a reflection of this concept. Is it a crystal dragon and man? We don't see them properly, but they are the same. However, there is no obvious change. There is no obvious change. Also, the dragon morphs back into a man. The scene is cool, but just... <laughs> the scene is cool, but just as a side story. So what's happening with these two? Even with all of these fan theories, I still feel like there are some unanswered questions. <laughs> what was Amadeus's motivation for the transformation? <laughs> Why was there a transformation? Amadeus explains it like it was an accident. Why did he show the girl the demon sword? Is Amadeus the only one in the show who can sense the connection between the beings? Why were these special connections different from others in the past? What were those connections? How does the sword transform? How does the beast transform? I would love to hear your thoughts. Next time, I'll share a scene from the novel, then some of my character descriptions and thoughts on a few subplots. Before I begin today, <laughs> Before I begin today's book, I want to update you on last night's posts. Long and short reviews, book club. No one read the entry, but quite a few of you were kind enough to ask about it. I was disappointed that no one wanted to take part, but for some reason, it was my first in a long time, and I'm not sure why I couldn't drum up more attention for it. I don't, I'm sorry for whatever this was. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. All right, see you later.